The senator from Florida is recognized. Mr. President, over the last weeks and days leading up to this vote here today, I, I, I've heard from a lot of people about this vote, and, and I guess I want to address it as much to them as anybody else. And, and these are people that I know. These are friends. These are neighbors. These are longtime supporters, generally people on my side of the political aisle. And they're upset. They're upset. They, they look at the media, and the media, they feel censored stories that might have been negative towards Joe Biden or were negative towards Joe Biden. The social media companies helped them out. And they saw how some states tinkered with and even mutilated state election laws. And, and, and they have doubts that the election was legitimate. And it gives this country this extraordinary crisis of confidence, which is very dangerous because democracy is very fragile and it's not held together by elections. Democracy is held together by people's confidence in the election and their willingness to abide by its results. And so the notion was, we need to do something. We need to fight. And several of my colleagues have, have adopted the idea, and, and I respect it, that they're going to object. Now, listen, it's important to understand something. Even the people objecting in the Senate recognize that it's not going to pass. It's not going to change the outcome, but it's going to send a message. And it's going to make a point. The problem is, I think it's a terrible idea at this moment. Just hours ago, a young lady died in this capital. That means somebody somewhere in this country got a phone call that their daughter was dead. Daughter was going to a political rally, she is dead. Died in this capital, somewhere not far from where we are standing. We had police officers, the men and women that we walk by every single day that guard the doors and we say hello to, out there with riot gear getting spit on and attacked. Today, not 10 weeks ago, just a few hours ago. And I think it's important to think about all those things on a night like tonight and everything that's happened. You know, I, I wouldn't even be here today. I, I doubt very much where I would even have been interested in politics had it not been for my grandfather. He died when I was 14, but I grew up at his knee. He would sit on the porch, he would smoke three cigars a day, and he loved history. He was born in 1899 in rural Cuba. It was still governed by the United States. It was a protectorate. Three years later, it gained its independence and became a republic. During my grandfather's first 60 years of life, he saw his country have an armed insurrection after a contested election, multiple presidents go into exile, two military coups, and the rise of a Marxist dictator, a tyranny that stands to this day. My entire life, my entire life, I have lived with and next to people who came to America because their country was chaotic and their country was unsafe. What I saw today, what we have seen, looks more like those countries than the extraordinary nation that I am privileged to call home. And I think about the mockery that it makes of our country. A lot of people, oh, well, China, China. No, no, let me just say something. In all modesty, no one here has worked harder on the issue of China. They hate my guts. I'm sanctioned, twice sanctioned. I don't know what they're sanctioning. Double sanctioned, and I can't travel there. I wasn't planning to anyway. China's laughing. They're loving this tonight. In Beijing, they're high-fiving because they point to this and say, this is proof the future belongs to China. America's in decline. Vladimir Putin? There's nothing Vladimir Putin could have come up with better than what happened here. Makes us look like we're in total chaos and collapse. Not to mention the Ayatollah, who's probably bragging, if he has buddies, to his buddies, look what's happening to the great Satan. I think politics has made us crazy. Everybody in this country has lost their minds on politics. And we have forgotten that America is not a government. America's not a president. America's not a Congress. Let me tell you what America is. America's your family. America's your faith. America's your community. That's America. That's what our adversaries don't understand, and that's what we need to remember. That is how we're going to rebuild this country and turn the page and have a future even brighter than our past. And so that's why I feel so strongly about this and why I hope those who disagree with me will understand. I yield the floor.